Getting my PhD. Oh, Oops. <clears throat> we call this meeting of the Jacksonville City Council to order. I want to welcome everyone who is in attendance tonight and also those that are viewing the meeting on G10 television. Uh, we will begin our meeting tonight with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Council Member Jerry Bittner, followed by the invocation by our City Attorney John Carter. Please rise. I pledge allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our Heavenly Father, as always, we pause to give you thanks. To give you thanks for this beautiful day. To give you thanks for the blessings that you so graciously bestow upon our city and upon each of us individually. 
We especially give thanks for all of our city employees who work each and every day to be of service to our city and its citizens. And it's always with a sad heart that we have to lose some of those employees. And tonight we mourn the loss of Al Alvarez. We give thanks for his service to the city and we pray for his family during this time of their loss. We pray for our service members who are serving us here and around the world, for their anxious families, and we pray for their safety and care. And as always, we pray for our mayor and our council, that your guidance and your direction would always be with them. All this we ask in your holy name. Amen. Amen. Council, you all have been provided with a uh, copy of the proposed agenda for tonight's meeting, and at this time I would entertain a motion to adopt. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to move uh, item number seven, which is the FY14 and 15 fee schedule amendment for planning, permitting, and inspection fees from the general, from the consent agenda to the non-consent agenda for discussion. Also, uh, would like to uh, discuss uh, amend item number eight as presented at our tables tonight and delete item number 10 in our old business, which is the rezoning of 202 and 204 Sunset Road since the rezoning partition has been withdrawn. Second. Okay, we have a motion and second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Uh, we got to wait till we get to. Uh, if there's anyone who is here uh, regarding this item number 10, which was the Sunset Acre uh, rezoning uh, request, uh, if you sh if you came tonight. I uh, just want to inform you that that petition has been uh, pulled by the petitioner. So uh, that will not be appearing on the calendar for tonight. Just to let you know in case you were, uh, showed up to speak at a uh, public hearing or for that one item, uh, that will not, that's off the table. The Home Holiday Decorating Contest is an initiative of the Jacksonville Environmental and Appearance Commission or Committee to encourage city residents to show off their community pride and light up the city. It is meant, also meant to be a fun family activity. Tonight we are giving an award for the outstanding home decorations for Christmas. And I've asked council member uh, Angela Washington to join me up front here since she is the council liaison to the uh, Clean and Green or I'm sorry, the Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. Also, uh, this time I'm going to ask Tim Early. Tim here. Tim, if you and your uh, family, uh, Danny Smith, Victor Case, and Pastor Mike Schwalm, come forward. Okay. I didn't know you were that old. I'm just kidding. Victor knows I'm picking on him. 
The home of Tim, uh, Mr. Tim Early and his family at 1010 Vernon Drive was the overwhelming winner, overwhelming winner of the holiday home decorating contest by the committee and the public. Their home in Northwoods uh, area featured a whimsical Christmas music and light show. In addition to his uh, family, Mr. Early was assisted by Danny Smith, Victor Case, and Pastor Mike Schwalm from the Center, uh, Centerview Baptist Church uh, in setting up the display. And I want to congratulate you on a job well done and, and beautifying. There's a, there we are on the screen there, uh, a beautifying and, and lifting the spirit uh, of, of Christmas uh, in our community. Thank you, Tim. Appreciate it. On behalf of the Environmental and Appearance and Advisory Committee, I present to you the Clean and Green Jacksonville Star Award, the Clean and Green Jacksonville 2014 inaugural holiday decorating award is presented to Mr. Tim Early and his family and friends for exceptional Christmas decorating efforts at their home, which benefits the Clean and Green program of the city of Jacksonville presented on this day, February the 3rd, 2015 before the Jacksonville City Council. So here is your award. Thank you so much. You are welcome, congratulations. And here is your winner award so that you may post out All right. well, in front you. of your home. All right. Well, thank you so yes. much. Please come up. Say something if you want. Well, I guess it was um, a lot of hard work, I can tell you that. <laughs> Wasn't it nice? <laughs> but it, it was just a wonderful opportunity to uh, bring something to the community, uh, especially as uh, as you see Pastor Mike Swan from Centerview. He's truly helped me with mixing into the commercial side of Christmas as we talk about the birth of Jesus Christ. He did our talking nativity and in uh, and, and our manger scene as he uh, did, uh, presented the whole story of baby Jesus or the birth of Christ Jesus. And uh, But it, it was a wonderful opportunity to, to see the community come out. Uh, I think we had um, <coughs> three nights when we had Santa there and uh, we had over 600 children and uh, it was a blessing to hear those children go to the manger as, as well as seeing the other nativity scenes mixed throughout our display as they, they talked about Christ Jesus. So so we thank you for this so much and thank you for the opportunity and, and the award. Thank you. Okay. Thank, you. Right, thank, you. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. All right, this brings us to our first section of public comment for the evening. I uh, have one person that has signed up, and uh, that would be uh, Chip Dodd from Waste Management. Ms. Dodd. Good evening, Mayor and members of the City Council. My name is Chip Dodd, and I work for Waste Management, and my address is 10411 Globe Road, Marsville, North Carolina, 27560. I appreciate the opportunity to speak to you tonight, and I just want to make a few brief comments on your commercial garbage collection. Believe me, waste management understands your plight, and we would very much like to help you resolve your issues. I would like to ask for the opportunity for waste management representatives to meet with your manager and your staff and to discuss the situation and possibly consider negotiation of a contract. Waste management was the low bid in a bidding process just one year ago and our proposal is still viable. We believe that we can help you reduce your deficit and your liabilities. We have some ideas and thoughts that we'd like to share with you. We would be interested in purchasing the equipment that you have bought to provide the commercial service. Um, and if you would prefer, we would just help you sell it, if that would be um, of assistance. If you have employees that would be displaced, if you went out to contract, we would be very interested in 
in looking at um, qualified employees. We're always interested in hiring qualified drivers. You recall, I'm sure, the survey that the city did about a year ago, and it was noted in the survey that your commercial service was satisfactory. Now, we, uh, we do recognize that there were some specific issues, and we have made improvements to our operation in Jacksonville, and we believe that we can offer you excellent customer service and we are agreeable to putting guarantees in a contract. I just would like to note that we're very proud of our safety record in the Jacksonville operation. For three years straight in our commercial line of business, we've had no injuries. In concluding, I just would like to again encourage you to, uh, to have a meeting with us to discuss some options on resolving your situation we very much would like to help you thank you for your attention thank you Ms. thank you <coughs> always nice to see you thanks thank you <clears throat> All right, so we're going to go ahead and uh, uh, go down to the, uh, well, let's see. I think I'm going to take a quick breather here for a minute. I know there's folks here that probably came for presentations or for other reasons and don't want to stay for the rest of the meeting, so I'm going to take a quick, uh, quick pause here and allow you the opportunity to uh, leave if you want to, uh, but you're welcome to stay. So now we're going to go to item number 11 on the agenda. And Oh, I'm sorry. We're going to do the adoption of the consent items. I'm still trying to get used to this new format here. Minutes, that's right, minutes. Oh, my gosh. We need to adopt the minutes or approve the minutes, don't we? Well, let's do the minutes then. How about that? Mayor, I'll make a motion to approve the January 6, 2015 special meeting minutes and regular meeting <laughs> minutes as presented. A second. All right. Any discussion? Here, none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. All right. Then we're going to do the adoption of the consent items, okay? okay I'll How's make, that? Make a motion that we approve the consent items as amended. As amended. Okay. Second. Second. Any discussion? Here, none. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 All right. We're going to take a moment and make a little change here. And just like that, we have a new seal, <coughs> newly approved. <coughs> I didn't do it. <laughs> I'm hoping the staff has researched that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure not. Okay, next we're going to go to item number 11. This is a public hearing on the uh, voluntary annexation petition on the Harry Brown uh, family LLC's 17.26 acres on uh, Marine Boulevard. And Mr. Massey is going to be presenting this item. And give me just a second here. Okay, Mr. Massey. Mayor and Council, this voluntary annexation petition is received from John L. Pearson Associates on behalf of the Harry C. Brown family for a 17.26 acre parcel that is contiguous to the current city limit boundaries. The tract is located along U.S. Highway 17 North near its intersection with Drummer Kelly Road and directly <coughs> across from Stevenson Toyota. Development plans are eventually to locate from two to seven commercial businesses on the site, including a future 22,000 square feet Gerber automotive repair facility and an enterprise rental car center. The 
financial analysis shows a negative cash flow of a five year review period. That cash flow is about a minus $97,000. And one of the main reasons is because it only assumes the, the initial development of those two uh, facilities. And uh, there's still additional lots to be developed. The staff recommends council adopt the annexation ordinance as presented. Council, any questions of Mr. Massey? Thank you, Ron. Where's the connectivity okay. to the city boundary? It, it's uh, <clears throat> it's right across the street from Stevenson Toyota on uh, Highway 17 North. Okay. <clears throat> any other questions? Thank you, Mr. Massey. <clears throat> We're re we are required to have a public hearing in this matter. At this time, I'll recess the regular council meeting and open a public hearing. Is there anyone wishes to speak in regards to this matter? Mr. Pierce, did you want to speak on behalf of your client? This, John. No, no. I don't have to in this one. Yes. Well, I'm going to tell the truth anyhow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just here on behalf of Harry Brown, and as I alluded to Dr. Woodruff, we, we know we've got two proposed uses, but I would envision in, in the near future with the development of that, there'll be some more coming up. You know, once you get a new development, you get the sewer line run to it and water put in. The way the town's good in that area, it's just an opportunity for a lot of other similar type businesses to locate there. And I'm just here to answer any questions that the council may have. Council, any questions of Mr. Pierce? Well, good. That was brief. That's easy. That's easy. Yeah. Again, anyone present wishes to speak to this matter? Close the public hearing and reconvene the regular council meeting. Council, you're being asked to con uh, consider annex the annexation ordinance. Move for adoption. Second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Agenda item number 12, this is a public hearing for a special use permit and type three site plan for Lejeune Collision Repair Center at 616 Belfort Road. Jeremy Smith will be presenting this item and this is a quasi judicial matter. So I will have you sworn to you swear that the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth to help you God. I do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, members of the council. We have a special use permit and site plan application for the June Collision Repair Center submitted by Jerry S. Stephen Properties, LLC. There's a vicinity map for you uh, at 616 Belfort Road. This is the aerial photography of the site. The subject property is zoned corridor commercial. Across Belfort Road, the property is zoned industrial used for the animal health. Um, pet daycare and grooming facility, an office, uh, offices and a church site. Adjacent properties are zoned to the south and to the northwest, zoned corridor commercial and used for auto service centers, uh, the June Automotive to the south and Smith auto, auto Service Center to the northwest. This is the zoning of the site, just to show you again that south of Belfort Road is all zoned corridor commercial. Uh, to the north is industrial. The application is to operate a paint and body shop, which under the new EDO adopted last year is a special use in the corridor commercial zoning district, and that's why you are seeing this project before you tonight. For you on the screen is the site plan. The 1.65 acre site uh, currently has 9,256 square feet that is proposed for the automotive uh, paint and body shop. This is a reduction of the current square footage by 1,380 feet. They are not proposing any new square footage. Uh, it is a redevelopment site. The planning advisory board heard this case at their January 12th meeting this year. They, along with staff, are recommending approval of this site with findings of fact A, B, D, E, F, and G being found in the affirmative. 
finding a back seat will be in the affirmative if staff is directed to update the camera landing plan. Mr. John Pierce represents the applicant. He, along with staff, will be happy to answer any questions that you may have regarding this application and site plan. Carmen, please note that we are in public hearing right now. In, in recess of the regular session. Uh, any questions of, of? You need to swear, Jeremy, Mayor. Especially used for quite a He swear. was sworn in. Okay, good. Yes. Uh, any questions of Mr. Smith? <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Pierce. Yes, sir. <laughs> I don't know. We could have done it then and not had to do it now, maybe. You swear to tell the information you're about to give is the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. So help you go. I do. Thank you. I just want to point out that I don't think you probably got a whole lot of questions, but it's been reviewed and met the ordinance, planning board, recommended approval, and staff's recommended approval. And I think it's an opportunity that we can take some older buildings dilapidated and upfit them and to make them standardized. In fact, we're reducing the area and I just think it'll dress up, help dress up. The, I think it's good for the whole Belfort Corridor to upgrade some buildings to make them refurbish and make, make them new looking. And but I'd like to answer any other questions you may have, but I just think it's hope, it's positive for the whole area. Council, any questions of Mr. Pierce? Another short one, I like it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Going good for you tonight, isn't it? <laughs> Is there anyone else present that wishes to speak to this matter of public hearing? Okay, thank you. So uh, we'll recess the public hearing now. And uh, Council, you're being asked to consider the special use permit and site plan. Uh, Mayor Phillips, I make the motion to approve the special use permit and site plans with the findings of facts A, B, D, E, F, G being found in the affirmative. Second. A motion and a second. Discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Next is agenda item number 13. Mr. Chair, we take that last motion to uh, direct staff also to bring in compliance with the camera plan. Uh, the camera yes, plan. yes mm -hmm. thank you. Please include that. <clears throat> all right, this is a commercial dumpster collection service fee schedule update amendment. And, uh, Wally Hanson, Public Services Director, will be handling this matter. Good evening, Mayor, Council. Um, before you tonight, we have a consideration on a fee schedule amendment for commercial uh, dumpster collection. If you'll recall, at your January 20th workshop, staff gave a mid-year update on commercial dumpster collection. Thank you, Glenn. As we discussed, the city <coughs> got into the commercial dumpster service on January 1st. The service was intended to be a separate, self-supported fund based on user fees. We hired five sanitation drivers, a heavy truck mechanic to provide the service. We purchased five front-end trucks, one container delivery truck, and 75 dumpsters. 60 of those were cycling containers, and 15 were for rental purposes. You saw this table also at your January meeting. Um, it gives you a snapshot of where we started at the beginning of the year uh, related to customers and accounts. And it gives you where we were as of December, midway through the year. Um, as you can see, we added about 15 accounts and approximately 111 collections per week. And we have also beginning, began renting those dumpster containers. Um, you, this slide was also at your January workshop. Um, it gives you a, a, a snapshot of where we were midway through the year uh, related to revenues. And as you can see, uh, the revenues were just slightly above uh, what we anticipated. So we were on track for revenues. Um, unfortunately, with expenditures, this slide shows where we've had some significant problems. Uh, we talked about, about those in pretty great detail at that January 20th meeting, but most notably, you can see that those were in overtime, the fleet, and fuel. These issues were related primarily to unanticipated vehicle maintenance um, and cost. Some of that was because we purchased used vehicles and they were not as in good of shape as uh, 
we had anticipated, so we did spend some money there. Um, one thing that we were not prepared for was the cost of tires associated with those vehicles. Um, it, we, we get a lot longer life out of the tires on our residential trucks, our residential collection trucks than we do on the commercial front end loaders. Um, we had some unforeseen circumstances, unfortunately. We wrecked a vehicle that was totaled. Um, we also had a workers comp claim uh, related to that incident. Um, and we also had a, a blown motor on, in one of the vehicles. And um, that is something that we had not experienced before in any of our residential trucks. Um, we also were over on our estimate of fuel usage and we did not plan for overtime cost. Um, at that meeting, we also prevented an action, presented an action plan. Um, those included uh, a monthly review by the city manager's office um, in written format. We are at the end of January and Gail has begun to pull those numbers. So you will have that report shortly. Um, we revisited our Saturday pickup rate and our other rates um, and level of service. And that's what we're here before you tonight to discuss. And in addition, we have also looked at our routes for efficiencies and we continue to do so. And I'll just, I'll give an example of that a little bit later on. And then we are working on preparing bid documents. Um, so on the item before you tonight for consideration, we have proposed fee changes. Um, as Ms. Stodd stated, the lowest bid was for 599 from the private um, sector. Um, that was about 37 cent above what the city's estimated um, bid and, or sorry, estimated cost. And we also um, looked at um, what would happen if we went to that 599. So before you, we've proposed a rate of $6, which is one penny over the 599. The reason that we did that is so that the numbers basically came out clean. Um, which is shown in the table below. Um, this is an excerpt from the fee schedule amendment that's presented to you tonight. Um, it covers about 88% of our customers. So you can see that the majority of those have two time a week pickup. And um, that covers approximately 76% of our customers. And then we have three time a week pickup for eight cubic yard, which is another 12%. Um, those fees, the $6 would take those fees for a two time a week, two cubic yard pickup, which is our minimum service from $75 and 80 cent a month to $79 a month. Um, it, the 599 to $6 difference works out to be, it would have been $78 and 92 cent or 93 cent or something. So that's why we propose $6 instead of the 599. Um, we are also proposing changes to additional collection. Um, the additional collection is anything that is not a regular stop or a regular pickup. And what we found was uh, that the, the call for uh, additional pickups is not excessive. We do not have a lot of calls for additional pickups. But when we do, especially if they come on a Friday or a Monday, it is difficult to work those into the route. Um, sometimes you may have a truck in the area, but because of the route, it may, it's planned for that vehicle, it may be overloaded or it may not be able to take that stop, so we have to send another truck. Um, so that we've proposed moving to a flat fee for those instead of, there was a formula that was in the um, fee schedule that was a little bit difficult to understand but we've proposed a flat fee for those. Um, for Saturday service, we really did not increase um, the amount of the pickup. What we did do is make the table a little bit easier to understand, and we extended into four and six cubic yard, which previously we didn't offer service to. And what we did say is those needed to have a minimum pickup equal to that of eight cubic yard twice a week, which is 16 total cubic yards. So that's why we said a minimum of four cubic yards 
um, sorry, a minimum of four day service for four cubic yard dumpster and a minimum of three day service for six cubic yard. So that would be a weekday. So they would have, if you have a four cubic yard pickup, it would be four weekdays plus a Saturday. And then for vertical compactors, for those not familiar with what a vertical compactor <coughs> is, it is essentially a dumpster that is serviced by a front end loader, but it packs essentially three to one. So a two cubic yard vertical compactor um, compacts six cubic yards, essentially. And that's what our fee is based on. We are also proposing changes to our monthly dumpster rentals. Um, what we had was our fees were based on a rate of return of some, somewhere between um, 18 and 24 months. And now, depending on the vendor and where we purchase them from, we would be in the 12 to 18 month range. So you can see that the fees range from two to eight cubic yards, and that would be, um, it would range from 30 to $60. So our next steps are um, to continue working on the bid documents. Um, we are in process. We've met several times uh, with uh, myself and sanitation and finance and Dr. Woodruff to discuss the bid documents. We are, I believe you see, received an email from Dr. Woodruff about putting together a commercial dumpster user group. We are planning to continue evaluating and implementing route changes, and we are looking to rebid um, to consider privatization, privatization uh, once we have those bid documents. And in light of Ms. Dodd's um, presentation to you earlier, um, obviously schedule a meeting with Ms. Dobb, Ms. Dobbs to um, talk about all of our options. Um, with that, we'll turn it over to you for any questions and for consideration. I have a question. Yes. You proposed changes for Saturday pickup. Yes, sir. Everything else you had, the old and the new. Can you tell me what the... the can you flip that back? And sure. Show me? Yeah. I missed it or something. Uh, the reason I did not put the old and the new is because if you look in the attachment that says attached to, to your agenda item, it was a table. If you do the math backwards in the table, it is essentially $150. We, we did not propose a rate increase. So I, while we proposed a new table because it's easier to understand, um, and then, and that's for the eight cubic yard. And then we expanded into the four and six. So if you look in that table, it'll say not currently available or not available. Mm. So that's why I didn't put an old and a new because we've determined that our rate covers our expenses for Saturday service, all of our expenses for Saturday service. And, and that's assuming though we're doing Saturday service without overtime. And we believe that by reworking the schedules and changing that you will be able to do that without a rate increase. Dr. Wood, one, one change, we did include overtime. You did that. include overtime. Yes, sir. I apologize. Yes, sir, we Mr. did Mr. include Bitter that at overtime. Mr. Bitter has a question. Well, just a comment, I noticed that one of the items is we're going to continue preparing bid documents. And what I heard just Wally say about meeting with Mrs. Dodd, while that may sound fair on the service, on the surface, I have a problem with that because we should be transparent in dealing with all commercial haulers and I think the proper way of doing this is to prepare bid documents not to have a meeting with yeah. only one possible contractor. Mr. Bitter, I believe that Ms. Dodd's comments were that she would be willing to honor the previous bid we would have to, of course, work with the city attorney to determine if that is, in fact, something we could legally do. I certainly agree with you that any meeting with Ms. Dodd is fact-finding, is not negotiating. Mr. Attorney, that is that accurate uh, as far as having to... Uh, I would certainly have to research that, uh, Mayor. I would not be that in a out. position to give you an opinion tonight. <clears throat> Just wanted to be clear, clear on it. Right, any other questions of uh, Wally while we have him here? Okay. 
right. Um, <clears throat> staff is seeking direction on this as far as approval of the proposed fee schedule <coughs> amendment for commercial dumpster service. Mayor Phillips, I make a motion to um, approve the proposed fee schedule amendment for commercial dumpster service as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Discussion. You're not all. Uh, excuse me. I'm sorry, Mayor. I was thinking about it. I did have a, a question for the city attorney. <clears throat> so we are got before us a proposal for a, a 26 cent increase on the tipping fee. By my calculations, approximate running the mills from what we've seen, we actually, we, we're estimating a deficit for this service. Again, by my estimations, if we wanted to eliminate that deficit via a fee increase, it would probably be $3.26. Do we have the legal authority to raise it, the fee, to $3.36? Yes, sir. So we. You mean with us having been a bidder on the surface? You're talking about? I'm just saying that we have the authority to charge what it costs us. Yes, sir. Because it's an enterprise fund. But yet we're not really charging what it costs us. Correct? Uh, that's correct. Let me address that. When we looked at this, there is no question that in order for us to not, not break even this year, but simply to cover the cost that we are projecting, your rate would have to be between $7.75 and $8. And you know, although Wally talked about doing the math backwards, I know those of you who are NC State fans, you didn't have any trouble with that doing the math backwards. The rate that is proposed to you today is a short, is a short, I'm sorry, is a stop gap measure that only brings you in line with the lowest bidder. It is not a rate that will put you in the black. Now, from our workshop on January the 20th, we felt that it was appropriate to try to honor as close as possible the low bid. And that's why the matter before you is $6, or for all practical purposes, the low bid of $5.99. There is no question if we are going to stay in this business, you will see another request from us to raise that rate to a rate that will cover your expenses as we are now seeing them. Obviously, one option that, that you could certainly take, which is a financially appropriate action, is to say to staff tonight, we are rejecting this. We are going to, if necessary, put it on the next agenda, and we're going to put it at the rate that will put us in the black for the rest of this year, not for the last six months. We're just talking about what's needed to carry us forward. And we can certainly do that. But this measure is simply, if I may use the term, to stop some of the bleeding. It puts us on a level playing field with what we would have charged if we had performed privatization to the customer. Because remember, the low bid was 566. This does not eliminate the over $200,000 deficit that this program has run. And Mr. Thomas is 100% correct there. All this rate does is take you and the customer to the same level of privatization based upon the bids. If you really want to get in the black or to eliminate as much as possible, the rate needs to be significantly larger from our estimate, $7.75 to $8. We felt... I felt, as your manager, that it was not appropriate to recommend that at this time because it would put us where we weren't really, if you pardon the expression, competing with what the private sector told you. But Mr. Thomas is right. You're going to have to have a rate. If our expenses continue as we have shown you on January the 20th, those rates would have to be in the range of $7.75 to $8.00 per tip. I'd just like to add one last thing, I guess, about this. I mean, I think everybody's clear about how I feel. 
but I do want to say that one of the most unfair and frustrating things that can happen to someone is to be held accountable for that which you are not responsible. To be held accountable for something that you cannot change. I'm sure that's happened to all of us. So your career, you get in a position with a superior that you're called out. So I can understand, I want to say I can understand the frustration that probably was felt by our sanitation department when they would get calls and complaints and they were not able to immediately rectify the complaint via using the vendor with just some past history. I can understand that, that frustration and I, I believe that frustration is probably augmented by the true concern that I know that our sanitation department has. And I, I want to recognize that the great job they've done residentially that in, you know, encouraged us to accept this challenge. So while I can see both sides of it, I think it's important to take a clear look at it. There's, we've heard reports of improvements. I mean, I personally have heard the same amount of complaints about our department as I did about waste, just about none. I mean, not that many for me personally. And I know my trash is all at the landfill, just like it would have been if we had not changed the situation. I'm not really recommending that we change the rate. I just, I feel there is an unfairness to the rate itself because it's deceptive. It's not covering the cost. This is supposed to be an enterprise fund and, and that's the way it's supposed to be. We were told this would not involve taxpayer money seven or eight months ago. We know that's not the case. But I'm going to vote for this motion anyway. I, just well, I agree well, with you. I yeah. think it should be a purely user-driven fee. Right. Uh, well, that's what it is. It's supposed to be. It's supposed to be, but it's, it's going to be, it's going to be uh, supplemented. Right. Yeah. Just like, uh, well. Right. It's residential. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so. Any other comments? Well, I think, I think the right decisions have been made. I think the intent was there, and now that we find that we can't perform at the level that we've anticipated, and I think that's been brought forward um, and bid documents are being prepared and new proposals are being prepared but in the meantime I think we need to try to protect our citizenry in terms of uh, the least amount of money uh, out of their coffers uh, to handle this situation and, and I'm assuming that once those documents are ready they'll be brought forward for a decision to go out for bid or a possible uh, privatization of it. Uh, am I correct in saying that? Uh, that is correct. It's, it's our assumption from the meeting that we had on January 20th that you've already <laughs> authorized us to proceed to prepare the documents and then review with you several options that are in those documents. And just for example, one of the options will be, will we be in the billing and collecting business or not? Will we ask the vendor to pick up recycling or will we keep recycling? We're showing you several options as we put together the bid documents. But it is our intention to have the bid documents in your hands very shortly so that you can give us direction on the approach and then we can get out to bid. One of the reasons why you need to do this is any vendor that is going to get into a competitive bid that's reasonable has to have enough time to set in motion their equipment, personnel, their systems. So we'll be bringing that back to you very shortly. I believe that we will have that on your workshop of two weeks away. At the very latest, it will be your workshop in March, the first one in March. So any, any bid or rebidding would probably begin with the fiscal year? The, the bidding the contract would begin on July the 1st unless the vendor is willing to start earlier. The bidding process I would hope to have out in March for you to consider by late March or early April. I have a question. Mm -hmm. As part of your bid document proposal, when will we be discussing whether we go out for privatization in, in total and or in part, meaning the the billing portion of it if we're going to go out you know maybe there's some of us that that would think that if we're going to do that that whatever company takes it on they need to 
take it on in full and not in part. Will we make that decision once the bids come back or prior to that? Uh, well, depending on our discussion, theoretically, on February the 17th, let's say that, we, that the bid documents are ready for us to review with you the 17th. I believe we can meet that schedule. We're already working on it, as Wally said. In the bid documents, we're going to show you several options for the way you want it to be bid. We can also structure the bids so that we're asking bids on each option. So, for example, you could get a bid the same way you did on the previous package, and that is that the service is provided by the vendor, but all billing and collecting is provided by the city. You can also get a second bid that says, no, everything in the way of billing and collecting and service is the responsibility of the vendor. There's a third wrinkle there having to do with landfill cost. So our thought is that we will show you each of those options on either the 17th of February or at the latest, the first meeting in March, and you will give us direction on either bid one or bid multiple approaches. <clears throat> when you're talking about the uh, changes in the um, fee schedule for, for now to finish this out for the rest of the year, you said you said this would stop the bleeding or, or it's an attempt to stop the bleeding uh that's under the assumption that we keep bleeding at the rate we were doing for the last seven months it, right let me say it this matter it it reduces the bleeding mm -hmm. if you want to stop the bleeding well, right, you need exactly. to go to rates that are well in excess of seven dollars yeah. and we did not feel i did not feel that that was appropriate given the fact that we did go to competitive bid and that competitive bid was the highest number I felt, if I'm using the term ethically, that I could recommend to you. I will also say to you that um, I accept full responsibility. I should have looked at the bidding process. I should have looked at the city documents better. I should have assumed some things that I did not, I should have addressed some things that I assumed would not happen. And I understand, I appreciate, uh, you know, Councilmember Thomas's comments. Uh, we all worked in good faith. But I will also say to you, uh, sometimes uh, good faith and good business practices uh, don't work together and have the same result. And I accept that responsibility. Well, I don't think anybody's uh, looking to attach any blame to anybody for doing anything. I mean, I, th well, I think I, it was a noble I effort. It was that. worthwhile, you know, uh, it was a road worthwhile traveling down. But, you know, to clarify my question my previous question though you know i know that a lot of where we're at now you know behind the eight ball is the result of some events right Correct. And assuming there are no more events would this not make us better it will definitely this will definitely make you better it will increase your revenues by about 15 to 17 thousand mm -hmm. dollars and what it will mean is that instead of being about a $250,000 subsidy, you're going to be more in the 220, 230, assuming everything continues bad. <coughs> However, we do believe by restructuring the routes, we're going to be able to reduce overtime. Now, we also hope, and hope doesn't give us anything but hope, that if we continue to have the trucks run the way that they've been running the last several weeks, because we've now repaired them where they are in generally good shape. But if we continue to have all the bad news that we had, you are still looking with this rate increase at well over $200,000 deficit. Okay, thank you. Any other discussion? All right, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? Motion carries. That brings us to uh, our last section of public comment for the evening. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I got a scribbled in here going back to item number seven under the consent agenda. And this is the uh, FY 1415 uh, fee schedule amendment for planning, permitting, and inspection fees. Ryan. Thank you, Mayor and Council. We are proposing a fee schedule amendment to the planning and permitting fees. The first part is basically getting the planning fees to match that of the UDO terminology. And then the second part was pertaining to the building fees. Some of the biggest changes include 
requiring that the general contractor pay for all new construction permit fees versus having the electrical and plumbing and mechanical contractors coming in and paying them separately. The um, separating out the additions from that and also increasing the minimum single trade permit fees. Residential is going from 65 <laughs> to 75 and the commercial single trade permits are going from 100 to 120. We looked at the, the number of trips that the inspectors were making on these single trade permits and we realized that they're more than a single trip in a lot of cases. So to cover the administration time, the additional trips on these single trade permits, we wanted to bump those up to more closely capture the amount of time that it takes to process and to do those inspections. Be happy to answer any specific questions that, that the mayor council may have as it relates to this proposal. Okay, make one, one additional comment before we open it up. Uh, one of the fee schedule changes uh, was actually recommended to us by one of the mechanical contractors because as you get into large scale buildings, there are various ways that you can heat or cool or plumb a building. So we also looked at the issue, as Ryan said, <laughs> of the reality that when the general contractor comes in and takes out a permit, he pays certain things. And then as the trades come in, they pay additional fees. It, it really, based upon our discussion with several of the general contractors, and we're really talking about commercial here, uh, there seems to be an easier way to do it. And that is, we're going to calculate the fees in a lump sum from the general contractor. Then when the individual subs come in, and we don't need to know who the subs are going to be at the time the general contractor gets their, their permit. Then when the subs come in, there's no question as to who is supposed to pay for what part. Can you address that a little further for me? Sure. Uh, the, in a lot of cases, some of the contractors already do this anyhow, where uh, Hunter Development, for example, that is residential. They know who their subs are. They bid um, with their subs bid, knowing that the permit fees are already included in the permit fees. So with our calculation, our fee structure, you know, the contractor will pay for the full square footage on the permit to begin with. In some cases, they'll know who the subs are. In some cases, they will not. But administratively on staff, it'll be a one-time go if they know who the subs are. If not, the subs will come in subsequently, but they won't pay anything other than a $20 administration fee. So the, the total fee amount will be the same. It's just the general contractor will pay for it on the front end versus having their subs pay it. And then the subs bill the general contractor back for the same amount of fees. Any questions of Mr. King? <coughs> yes, Mr. Mayor. I, I, I guess I'm the one who, who asked it be discussed. Um, one of the things that I brought up uh, with, with Ryan, Ryan and I had a conversation today, was the, uh, the fuel, fuel piping being figured into uh, a lump sum on the new, new construction. And that's, that's not real. We, typically, new construction uh, commercial doesn't always have fuel piping. And I wanted to make sure that, that it wasn't a, a automatically charged when we didn't have any fuel piping. So I, I suggested to Ryan that that possibly be looked at as uh, being able to adjust the fee downward by eight cents a square foot if there's no fuel piping. And uh, I'm assuming you're gonna have some sort of language in here that would, would address that, or were you gonna handle that at the time of application? There's already language on the very bottom page, on page nine, uh, the, the third paragraph up from the bottom, that allows uh, us to, to look at the project site and consider if the fees, the 54 cent, is too high or too low, so if there's no fuel piping included, we certainly could cut out eight cent per square if there's no fuel piping involved. Example came up this afternoon where a hotel a fuel piping permit came in. They are not using fuel piping throughout the entire hotel. So we came up with a, an alternative square footage ratio for fuel piping. Now, if that's gonna be 
that sentence is at the bottom of this part of the fee schedule. So in order to make that more apparent, I think that we would need to consider moving some language up to the front part of the fee schedule just to make that more apparent to the contractors when they're looking at the fee schedule to say, you know, hey, fuel piping is not included, or we need to specify that if the building doesn't have fuel piping, we will reduce the trade by eight cents. I think it never hurts to be more clear if that's the direction we want to go in. The, uh, the other comment that I had was that uh, the sprinkler uh, is not part of this section. It's actually in, a, in the fire section, and, and I suggested uh, that that needs to be brought over into this section um, because otherwise it, it's sometimes a surprise. If, if you're an out-of-town contractor and you go to a new area or you pull up your building uh, fees, uh, there's no, nothing addressed here sprinkler. You actually have to go to another, another portion of the fees. And, and I think it'd be, uh, it'd be nice <coughs> if we could have some sort of reference back to that. And Ryan, Ryan kind of agreed that that uh, was more transparent and, and uh, I guess fair to the, to the people who are bidding because they're trying to put these monies in their, in their, uh, uh, in their bid. Um, and then the other thing was that the technology fee, you know, it, um, that was a little bit surprised, but um, apparently we've been charging, but we've been allowing some exceptions in the past, and I guess you're just clarifying, hey, there is no exceptions on, on the technology fee. Um, That's correct. So, and, and, and that may be, you know, the technology fee might be assumed by somebody from out of town bidding. They may say, well, I've got telecommunications and security and, and audio visual and so forth. Um, you know, is that technology? We tend to think of that as technology items. I know you're calling it a technology fee, but really it's a, an administrative fee to, to cover the cost of, of the e-plan permitting and um, so forth software that we've invested in. So. Again, maybe perhaps a little, little explanation on that would be, would be good. Was there anything else you and I talked about? Wasn't that about it? I think that's Wasn't that, that my major the major issues? issues? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank Any you. other questions? All right. Councilor, you've been asked to uh, consider the fee schedule amendment. I did have one other. I just thought of something. The, uh, the fuel fuel piping. Uh, I, I still think that's uh, an excessive fee. Um, uh, here I am uh, <laughs> talking about decreasing revenues for the city, uh, but but that fuel piping to me is not a trade. Um, it's called a trade here, but it really is not a trade in 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 usage in common usage in the construction industry. It's a it's a item of work. Uh, you don't have to have a, your, your fuel piping uh, licenses are handled under the plumbing or the HVAC. And so um, sometimes I feel like our fuel piping charges can be excessive. Uh, you recall the discussion, Randy Ramsey with, with Hobby Lobby and so forth. Uh, uh, I'd, I'd almost rather see fuel piping go to some sort of a, of a connection fee, if you will, per per appliance, per water heater, or per, per the uh, HVAC unit, or whatever. But uh, that would be my recommendation. But that's something for you to look at. I, I, I think most municipalities do a, uh, instead of a standard square footage for fuel piping, do a, a based on a fixture count. I, I think if you do some research, I think you'd find that. I, I might be surprised. You might, you might come back and say, no, that's not true. But, uh, there are some that do the per appliance. I, I, and I typically see per appliance on, on that. And even plumbing sometimes, not always. Some places do the standard square footage charge for plumbing. Some places do do the, the per fixture, which is sometimes aggravating for us on the front end, trying to determine how much we're going to put in our bid for, for plumbing permit. But uh, anyway, but I can live with this if, if uh, we make some changes as we discuss, and if you'll look a little further into fuel piping, uh, maybe a revision down. Perhaps just look at it anyway. With, Thank you. I'm, I'm done. Thank Anybody? you. Anybody? Again, you've been asked uh, to consider the uh, uh, fee schedule amendment. 
Mr. Mayor, Mayor I'll, uh, I'll make a motion that we approve uh, uh, what's, what's being recommended tonight along with some, some clarifications that I, I think uh, staff it says that they have no issues with. So. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Okay, that brings us to our last section of public comment for the evening. I don't have anyone signed up, but is there anyone that wishes to speak that didn't get a chance to put their name on the list? Okay. All right, we'll go to our reports. And uh, since you're already warmed up, I'm going to let warmed you go up. ahead. Here. Proud to be here. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. No report. Thank you. I guess I'll just say congratulations to our missing council person. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some people learn, some people keep right on, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> Education is a lifelong experience. <laughs> Thank you. No report. Uh, Mr. Bitt. No report. Mayor Pro Tem Lazar. No report. How about that? No report. Dr. Woodruff. Two quick things. We'd like to uh, inform the public and the mayor and council that this past Friday, we did have passport training for 11 of your city employees. Even the city attorney was able, you notice I said even the city attorney was able to pass the exam. So he is also now a authorized application, passport application agent, acceptance agent. We do still have to finish the rest of the training and finish the uh, work with the uh, Department of State out of Charleston. We anticipate that by probably now late February, maybe a little bit earlier, we will be able to open up to accept applications for passports both here in City Hall by appointment and at the Center for Public Safety on a walk-in basis. We will be advertising that as we get a little closer. You will also be very pleased to know that the work that the city staff, especially uh, Michael LaQuarrie and Anthony uh, Prins, we have now had the DOT award bids and the city award some additional bids and the medians that are out here on 17 should be under construction by late this month or early March. Those will be the two medians where Johnson comes into 17 and then the very long median which is out generally in front of the filling station where you have the fork in the road between 17 and Old Bridge Street. Beyond that, as always, Mayor and Council, we thank you all for your leadership and what you're doing to bring this city forward. Thank you. No report, Mayor. Thank you. All right. Entertain a motion to adjourn. So Se moved. Second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.